Trezak show. I'm the Trev. It's too sweet. Anyway, getting back to retired numbers. Getting back to content in general. Know that my uh, season ending stuff is coming very, very soon. Because the season ends in a week. But anyway, we're getting off topic. Getting back to retired numbers. Today we're talking about the first number retired in Vancouver. And as far as players who fit in the mold of power forward or grinder, this number is justifiably retired. I mean, he wasn't wasn't a superstar by definition, but he was a point guy. He can make the play and he can grind the body better than anybody at that time. Let's talk about Steamer. Number 12, Stan Smeal. Let's do it. Stan Smeal's 13-year career with the Vancouver Canucks began on June 15th, 1978, when Smeal was drafted 40th overall, which is the third round of 1978 amateur draft. And Smeal would join the Canucks the following season, which saw him put up 38 points in 62 games. But even more impressively, Showed his physical style of play as well, earning 89 points, or 89 penalty minutes, sorry, in the process. Now during the season, the Canucks would clinch a playoff spot, which saw the Canucks play the Flyers in the preliminary round. And while Smeal would put up two points in two games, the Canucks were quickly eliminated. For 1979-80, Smeal would lead the team in scoring for the first time in his career, putting up 78 points in 77 games along with a career-high 204 penalty minutes. <laughs> it was during this season that Smeal would put up a team record point streak that lasted 12 games. During this stretch, Smeal scored 5 goals and 17 assists, which saw him beat the previous team record by one game. Shortly after this streak was broken, Smeal would score his first career hat-trick in a game against the Atlanta Flames, and nearly a month after that, Smeal would have a four-assist game in a win against the Edmonton Oilers. And while the Canucks again made the playoffs, it was another short ride as the Canucks were eliminated in four games, with Smeal putting up two assists. For 1980-81, despite being one of his most physical years in terms of play, yet also seeing his penalty minutes decrease to 171, he played a full 80-game schedule, putting up 63 points in the process along with three points in three playoff games. For the 81-82 season, or more specifically on Halloween 1981, Smeal put up a 5-point game, which also included a hat-trick and an 8-4 win against the Philadelphia Flyers. Better to cure those playoff demons anytime you can, even if it means a regular season, right? <laughs> well, later on this season, he'd be named team captain, replacing Kevin McCarthy, who managed to get himself injured. And this would be a role that would last with Smeal for the majority of of his career. And even though the Canucks would finish the regular season with a losing record, Smeal would record a 78-point season in a full 80-game schedule. And the Canucks would go on one of their more memorable playoff runs, actually managed to escape the preliminary round. In Game 5 of the Campbell Conference Finals, Smeal would score two of Vancouver's six goals to defeat the Chicago Blackhawks and advance to the Stanley Cup Finals. Now, while that is a great thing to boast about, the unfortunate news here is they were facing New York Islanders, who at the time didn't just finish 41 points ahead of the Canucks, but the Canucks were going to be facing the two-time defending Stanley Cup champions in the process. And Sm while Smeal would go on to score 25 points in 17 playoff games, the Canucks would lose the Cup in four games, as the Islanders did win their third straight. Free 283, Smeal would be officially named the permanent captain, as when he did take it over the season prior, it was more of just a fill in role. But due to the Canucks' response under his captaincy during the previous season and their playoff run to the Cup Finals, the coach and management felt it was the right move to make, and they weren't wrong. Smeal could respond was having his career year. During the season, he recorded the Best month points-wise, that is, in Canucks history for the month of March. Smeal scored 10 goals and 21 assists for 31 points in 16 games. 
And the streak began on February 27th, 1983, and lasted all the way to March 23rd, 1983. Smeal came off a team record 13 game point streak, which included 8 goals and 27 assists. The previous team record was set in 1980. Smeal held that hold this record for 6 days. <laughs> As his line mate Darcy Rhoda managed to take his point streak going to 14 games, so beat it by 1. But with all this production, Smeal would lead the team in scoring for the second time in his career, putting up a career highs all across the board, scoring 38 goals and adding 50 assists for 88 points. And those 88 points were a franchise record at the time for most points in a season, but Smeal wouldn't hold that record for too long either. <laughs> well, the Canucks made the playoffs again, and with hopes go back to the Stanley Cup Finals and maybe turn the fortunes around and win it, the team would ultimately fall short and were eliminated four games by the Calgary Flames. Smeal added five points in those four games. For as good as 82-83 was, 83-84 wasn't going to be too kind, as this was the start of a, st of a steady decline, not just for the Canucks, but for Smeal's production as well. As Smeal would only score 67 points in a full 80 games. And while 60 isn't bad, it's not 80-80 he'd scored the previous year. The previous season, though, as mentioned, where he did set a team record for 88 points in a season, that was broken this season by Patrick Sundstrom, who scored 91. Canucks would make the playoffs again, though, but much like 82-83, they were out in four games to Calgary, which saw Sneal put up three points. Unfortunately, this would be the last time for five seasons the Canucks would make the playoffs. For 1984-85, Stan Smeal scored his 187th career goal on February 27, 1985, which put Smeal as the new Canucks leader in all-time goal scoring. He was still putting up high 60s in points, scoring 64 in a full 80, but this would be the last season Smeal would play a full schedule. 1985-86 would be the last time Smeal would score 60 or more points putting up 62 points in 73 games. Notice how I said that steady decline. 86-87, we only see Smeal play in 66 games. But there were notable moments in these games. On November 5th, 1986, Smeal would be the, become the all-time franchise his leader in games played in the 648th game. On December 14th, Smeal would record his 551st career point which became the franchise record in career points. And he also managed to score his sixth career hat trick in that game as well. And just for good measure, on January 16th, 1987, Smeal was awarded and scored his first and only penalty shot during his career, scoring against Mike Vernon of the Calgary Flames, who we will talk about at some point. He finished the season with 43 points, and this season would be the last time Smeal would score 20-plus goals Putting 20 in. Smeal would only play, would only miss over 20 games due to injury in 1987-88, playing in 57 games and putting up 37 points. During this time, Smeal would be temporarily replaced as team captain before the C was returned to him for 88-89. Now, 87-88 wasn't so nice. 88-89 was better in terms of games played for Smeal, as he played 75 games and I added 25 points while in the process. And the Canucks did make the playoffs, but this would be the last time the Canucks made the playoffs with Smeal in the lineup. And even though the Canucks lost the Flames again, it was in seven games instead of four. Unfortunately though, Smeal was held pointless during these playoffs. 1989-90 would be Smeal's last season as team captain as he would resign the C at the end of the season. And Smeal only played in 47 games, mostly due to being a healthy scratch and didn't manage to score his first goal until the Canucks' last game of the season, which was almost a full calendar year since he scored his last goal the previous season to that. And that one goal was part of his 16 points for that season. Which brings us to 1990-91, which would be Smeal's last season. His last goal 
was scored against the New Jersey Devils on December 5th, 1990. And his last game was played against the New York Islanders on March 16th, 1991. Sneal added 14 points in 45 games. And once the season had ended, Sneal had announced his retirement from the NHL. So let's go over some stats and accomplishments. <clears throat> in 896 games, Sneal scored 262 goals, 411 assists for 673 points. With 1,556 penalty minutes to add to that. And in 41 playoff games, scored 16 goals, 17 assists for 33 points. When he retired, Smeal was the franchise leader in games played, goals, assists, and points, all of which records have since been broken. As mentioned, he led the scheme, team in scoring twice, did not represent them in the All-Star game at all, but that's okay, didn't, didn't need to. And on November 3rd, 1991, became the first Canuck to have his number retired. So it's a benefit of being able to say that I watched him play growing up. I can give you an honest opinion. Feisty, feisty player. Fun to watch. I mean, he wasn't the biggest guy. I think he was only like 5'8". He was tiny, but lots of spunk in him. Very physical. Solid hitter. Solid playmaker. He was phenomenal. He was the power forward every team should have had, or at least had a copy of, because some of the things he could do were just nothing short of great. But, again, he was more the power forward, and as I said, the power forward every team should have had, or at least a copy of. Fun guy to watch. <clears throat> 